So welcome back to my channel. I have um, shared my job hunt while I was job hunting for the role of a pharmacy dispenser in the UK. If you haven't seen it, please go and check it out. So one thing that uh, I have realized or I've learned during that job hunt is that number one, if you are a foreign trained pharmacist and you are now resident in the UK and you're looking for ways to integrate yourself or to you know switch career from a foreign trained pharmacist to a uk pharmacist you have to start from scratch that is just the honest truth it's a bitter truth actually so you will start seeing job adverts on different job platforms and you should go for the role of a pharmacy dispenser or a pharmacy apprentice this pharmacy apprentice is like the lowest rank the lowest level that you can apply for the, the pay is very low and it's like you haven't even been to a pharmacy school like you just want to come and apprentice ship now you want to come and learn work and then they can actually train you and even send you to pharmacy school in the uk if you're lucky to land the role of a pharmacy apprentice and I, I applied to several places. One of them got back to me and said, for me to land that role, I need to have been resident in the UK for a minimum of three years. <laughs> so that seems almost impossible to get, you know, because I'm new here. I haven't even been here for three months. So guys, I started looking for a role of a pharmacy dispenser. And honestly, I got several, several invites for interviews. Like, I've even lost count. <laughs> Some of them, I honored their invitations. And for now, I've attended three interviews and I still have another interview. Too. So guys, uh, one of the three interviews that I attended, I was actually interviewed. The other two, please just check out that my pharmacy haunts video, job haunt, pharmacy job haunts video and see why I didn't get interviewed for a first two places that I went to in Stockton on Tears. So in the last one, I was actually interviewed and that was at Roland's Pharmacy. And I just wish to share the interview questions that I was asked during the interview. Okay, they are yet to get back to me because they are still actively recruiting. Like they still have a number of people, uh, applicants, I mean, that they want to interview. And so they haven't decided yet. The last time I called them to know what's up, like haven't heard back from you, they said that they still have some people to interview this week. And after interviewing everybody, that's when they would give their verdict and then get back to me. So guys, I realized from all this, my past experience, to narrow down my applications to pharmacy dispenser trainee, the one that has trainee, because those ones are the ones that are willing to take in foreign trained pharmacies and to train you on NVQ2 and subsequently NVQ3 because one of the prerequisites to get a pharmacy dispenser role in the UK is that you must have done your NVQ2. So you see some job adverts saying qualified pharmacy dispenser and then you see some saying pharmacy dispenser trainee or pharmacy advisor dispenser trainee. So I have limited my applications to the ones that have trainee. Somebody once asked in my comment section that is it possible to get a pharmacy dispenser job in the UK as a Nigerian trained pharmacist? Initially, I didn't have an answer to that because I was still in Nigeria. But now that I am here, I have met someone. She sent me her own CV for me to look through it and to serve as a template, which I edited. And that CV is what I've been sending out. So if you're in Nigeria or you're in the UK, you are a foreign trained pharmacist and you need this kind of CV as a template, I could share my home with you, but join my membership and i'll be able to send you a template or even review your own cv for you so guys let me just go straight to the interview questions so on getting there i wasn't asked can we meet you or introduce yourself no. so the first question i was asked was no my mail be looking at my jottings what would you do if a patient has come to complain of a wrong strength you have dispensed so she said, if a 
if a customer or a patient has walked in to complain that I dispensed a wrong dosage, like a wrong strength of medication to them, that how would I handle it? So I answered by saying it all depends on number one, the kind of patient, but because individuals differ. Some patients would, <laughs> they can be like, oh, I'm going to report you. Uh, I'm going to tell the police and all of that. Meanwhile, we can have some that would handle it, you know, maturely and all of that. So I said that it all depends on the dosage. Again, depending on whether it's an underdose or an overdose. In the case of an underdose, first thing is to apologize to the customer or the patient for the wrong dosage or the wrong dispensing or the dispensing error. After apologizing, and then I would find out when last the patient took the last dosage, and then I would advise if it is close to take another dosage just to augment the normal dosage, the, just to make up for the one that is supposed to complement that dosage to get Oibo. So for instance, if the patients are taking five milligrams instead of 10, I'll just ask when last the patient had the uh, last dose. And if it is not long ago, we'll tell the patient to advise him or her to take another five milligrams so as to make up to that 10 milligrams. And if it's a long time, if the timing is poor, I'll just advise that subsequently, like going forward, please take this so so, -so dosage, this 10 milligrams, and that would be all. But then if it is an overdose, I would check to see if the medication is a leather one, if the overdose is leather, if it is going to be fatal. If that is so, I'll just put a call through to the accident and emergency and then if it is not laid out, I could report it to the pharmacist on duty. You know, I'm a pharmacy dispenser. I could report it to a pharmacist on duty. And then she was like, okay, would you document it? And I said, oh, yes, I'll document it. So she explained for that, that there are, two, there are four types of risk. There's the low risk, there's the medium risk, there's the I risk and there's the maximum risk or something. So for the low risk, she said I could just uh, report it to the pharmacist on duty. But for the high and the maximum risk, that uh, for the medium risk, we could we could report it to the GP, general practitioner of that patient. And for the high and the maximum risk, we have to call the accident and emergency. And then she said everything, every error has to be documented and signed properly. I should describe where I have discharged an excellent teamwork. I should describe where I have exhibited an excellent teamwork. And I was like, okay, uh, I've worked somewhere where they didn't realize that the software they were using for stocking was already outdated and when i came when i got to that when i joined the team i discovered that and i reported it and they were recording a large number of expired products as at the time i joined the team so i suggested and i ah, about we have a, a check and balancing aside updating the software we could also write down some of the medications that are going to expire in three months to come so that every morning uh, when the staff resume work, they can look at it. We just paste it somewhere that is conspicuous. Everyone would look at it so that when you're dispensing, you have an idea of what medications are expiring in the next three months and then you will be on the lookout for because there are also, I also mentioned that there are different batches and sometimes different expiry dates that I realized that in their, uh, in their shelf arrangement, they weren't bringing out the old stock before filling the, sh the sh stock on the shelf. Like, if a particular medication is reducing in number, and then you have brought more of that medication from the stock, instead of it to push out the old ones on the shelf to the front, and then the new ones, put them at the back, so that the ones that are expiring first, we go out, you dispense them first and all that stuff. People were not doing that. I believe that they were just bringing 
new stock and then arranging in front of the old one and as a result they were having they were recording high number of expired products so i said joining their team i found out all those things and i suggested ways to reduce um expired products and at the end of the day be able to reduce number of expired products and everybody was active and everybody was involved so she was just nodding for me <laughs> then uh, the next question she said i should describe the customer service that i've rendered to my patients i should describe where i have uh where i have rendered an excellent customer care service to the patients <laughs> and okay i answered that actually personally when patients walk into the pharmacy i don't tell them we don't have a particular medication even if we haven't stocked it what i'll do is to go all out uh i would seek to know if they can come back maybe in 24 hours or maybe in 48 hours and i'll go out of my way to make sure i get that medication for them i'll take down their contacts and once i get the medication i'll put a call through to them to ask them to come and pick it up so another thing i said was that for caregivers who come to get medications for their children or their words i don't just tell them well this is how to use it especially if we have medications that we have to reconstitute say like antibiotic suspension that are in powdered form i will try as much as possible to help them reconstitute it before they leave and actually that is what they practice here when you have you come to get medication for children and it needs reconstitution they will do that for you before you go so then number four the first question she asked why roland's pharmacy like why our pharmacy and that is why it is important whenever you're going for an interview to read up on the profile of the company that's going to interview you because they want to know if your own goals if your own visions align with their own so you have to just make your response align with your own so before now i've gone to check out the profile of roland's pharmacy i know that it's uh, a member of the phonics medical group of companies and that they have some stability and blah 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 and i was able to answer that question very well so later she asked me that would i be going for any holiday in the next three months and then she said jokingly that if i would be going to nigeria that she was coming with me <laughs> so i told her no <laughs> okay then she asked if i drive and i told her yeah i used to drive back home but haven't driven since i got to the uk and she said they don't use it for anything that she's just wondering why it is in that questionnaire so uh she asked me why i came to england yeah something like that and i told her that okay i came to england because my husband got a job that's one i'm independent and then i want to i can't really remember how she asked that question but i remember i, I remember telling her that i want to uh i want to come back to pharmacy practice even in the uk so that i'll be able to gather some knowledge understand how their pharmacy practice is in the uk and subsequently improve pharmacy practice in nigeria where necessary and she was really impressed like oh my god <laughs> So lastly, she asked me if I had any question for her. Then I went about asking her about training that since she knows, because I told her that I'm a foreign trained pharmacist from Nigeria. And then I told her, would there be trainings for me? Blah, blah, blah. And she said, yes, that they are going to train anybody that they employ, especially because I, in my own case, I don't even have any experience uh, of the pharmacy dispenser in the UK that they are willing to train. So guys, just wish me luck. This is the end of my interview with Roland Pharmacy here in the UK. Thank you if you have watched up to this point. Please do well to subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Subsequently, I'll be bringing more of pharmacy content on this channel. See you in my next video.